Hello Salem, I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett. It's August and I'm pleased to be sharing with you a little bit about some of the things happening in our city. Today's interview is with city librarian Kim Carroll, who's going to tell us about the services our wonderful library has been providing in our city since the 1900s. She's going to tell how it's not all books anymore. But first, I want to remind residents that the Willamette Slough Habitat Restoration Project continues. The City of Salem is gearing up for its third year of targeted treatment of an aggressive invasive water plant, a water primrose that is harming the slough as well as wildlife and water recreation opportunities. Not to worry though, our Public Works Department Clean Streams team is working hard to enhance the slough and all the habitat in and near Mindel Brown Island Park. Learn more about our overall city efforts at the city's website. And speaking of the website, this summer the city launched a brand new website in an effort to boost the community member's experience by featuring an easier to navigate platform, enhanced search features, prominent buttons and links, all wrapped up in a flexible and responsive design for viewing on either desktop or mobile devices. So take the website for a spin see some of the city services available and what's going on in our departments and agencies. Well, Kim, Kim Carroll, our new librarian, I'm just really excited to have you here today to just visit about what's going on at the library. I think anyone who's been there in the past year, really, or several mm -hmm. months, uh, is going to have noticed a lot of differences. But I think one of the big differences, a new librarian. Tell us a little about yourself. Oh, well, it's great to be here, Mr. Mayor. So I am originally from Oregon, and uh, I grew up kind of in this area. I grew up in Malala. I have lived in southeast uh, Portland for years. I worked for Multnomah County. I started my career with Budden Library in Milwaukee, and I've been in libraries for about uh, 23 years working oh, at different great. levels. I just came from Arizona about a year and a half ago where I was uh, working for Maricopa County Library District there. So, oh, great. Yes. Well, we really lucked out getting you. I uh, mentioned to you as we were sort of waiting for the camera to roll uh, how much I'm enjoying the library and just there there is a sense of space and uh, access. How do you do that? And the welcoming lady or yeah. person. <laughs> yeah, so we have really great staff. They've put in a lot of thought into how we do our services and how we manage our collections and how the building is set up. And uh, we do have a greeter's desk so that people who are unfamiliar with the new building, they can kind of nav help them navigate. Uh, we have um, our collections are set up all across the building. We have our we have moved our teen area up to the top and we've created a teen scene, which is uh, a great space for teens to hang out and reserve for teens and their families. And then we also have, uh, now we have study rooms in our building, right. which people can reserve, as well as we've added additional meeting rooms. Uh, we uh, have um, something for everybody in the community. So whether you have a library card or don't have a library card, we offer free access to our computers and to Wi-Fi. We have a new collection called um, no, li no Card, No Problem, where you can just take a book and return it. It's the honor system. So a lot of those things create the welcoming space and just the difference in the architecture too, which um, we thank the uh, community of Salem for passing the bond to improve the seismic uh, uh, strength of the library, as well as our library foundation for adding all the, the beauty and, and, and the elements that make it the welcoming space that it is. And it is, and it, one of the welcoming uh, changes, I think, no fines. No fines. We are so <laughs> excited about no fines, offering that to our community. A lot of people know that that's kind of something that's going on across the United States, and we're proud uh, to be a uh, part of that movement. So what it does is it reduces barriers. You know, we oftentimes, as kids, we don't have a way to get to the library, and so we don't have a way to return our books, so we might accumulate fines. We know that people often um, are living in situations where they're moving from 
place to place, don't have a stable home life. So we want to reduce the barriers for those who cannot afford to pay those fines and make sure that everybody has equitable access to our collection. I think that's great. I, uh, my initial reaction, because I've dealt with the city for so many years and particularly in budgeting was like, well, that will reduce your budget. And I found that's not what's happened. I, I know for myself, uh, either I was very well trained or I, it's the right thing to do. I, my books are on I, all the time, on time, if yes. not in advance, uh, where I would get a small fine, maybe I'd get 50 cents or mm -hmm. a buck. That just doesn't happen to me anymore. I, I get them in, no problem. <laughs> Well, that's great. Uh, and the other thing that we feature uh, now that many people don't know about is an automatic renewal system. So if nobody right. is waiting for your book, it'll be automatically renewed for some of our items. If your book isn't returned uh, within a certain amount of time, you will be charged for the book. So that's how book, we huh? uh, alleviate the, the fines. So we give people the opportunity to return yeah. a couple days late without the fines. I, I mentioned uh, as we started that we've had a library since the 1900s. That's amazing. And it has changed. I mean, I, I walk in and it, it is not, a, it's not the way it was when it was down at the old Carnegie <laughs> building downtown, uh, which is the one I first ran into. What's, what's going on over there? So we have not only our physical space and our collections in that space, we have different collection, unique collections too. So I, I did already talk about our space as the teen scene and we also have our discovery room which is an uh, interactive exhibit for children. Uh, we change it out thematically. This, uh, this time um, during summer reading we had it, uh, the theme was our summer reading program, Off the Beaten Path, so we had Bigfoot, we had a camping site set up, we had a ability to build your own log cabin, a fishing hole, but along with those um, the, the space, we have uh, unique collections. So we're starting a library of things where we'll, you'll be able to check out things like a metal detector or, um, a metal de yeah, <laughs> or interactive <laughs> games for kids and a, a digital microscope. Try those things at home, see if it's something you like or just maybe use it as a one-off if there's something that you just were curious about. In addition to all of those things, if you can't get into the library, we have a multitude of electronic resources that really came in handy during the shutdown that we had earlier um, in, uh, you know, in, during the pandemic. So we have um, two uh, online resources that have uh, electronic books, electronic magazines, audible uh, audio books. One is our library to go and one is our iCloud. So both of those um, platforms will allow you to download uh, electronic resources and books, including books onto your devices, including your telephone, your tablet, any of those things. I get, uh, I don't know if it's weekly or every two weeks, something I apparently signed up for called Canopy yes. that lets me watch movies yes. at the Yes, so library. that is another digital platform we have. So you get credits and you can spend so many credits and, and check out and basically check out movies on your device. It works like a Netflix streaming system uh, similar to that, but it's free with your library account. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, databases that have um, online learning resources. So let's say you're going into the military and you want to study for the ASVAB. It has the books, it has practice tests, it has all sorts of resources that you can use just by logging in with your library account. You can access that from your home, from your neighbor's house, from Starbucks, any place you have Wi-Fi. Is there a menu of all this? Yes, yeah, so all of this is included on our website. So okay. along with the city's new website, you'll find the library as one of the, um, in, under the community, uh, uh, under the community tab in the, on the website, and then it'll list our electronic resources there. So you can uh, find a list of all the databases. Another really great database we have is Consumer Reports. Yes. A lot of people want to you know, check out the ratings on a refrigerator before buying it. You can log in with your library card and, uh, and just do a search on refrigerators and you'll be able to access all of that information. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a, really, there's a tremendous value there. I mean, mm -hmm. just, just not buying the subscription to the magazine, yes. I guess. Yeah. Would be, yeah. That's really remarkable. Um, why, you know, sometimes I think people don't know 
they can use the library or how to use it, that there's a, almost a barrier. Talk a little about what happens when you come into our library here and what, how are they greeted? How does it all work? I mean, how do you get them so to accustomed? Get a, yeah, <laughs> to get a library. So we do a lot of community outreach. So we work with the schools. We work with Salem Kaiser Assistance League. So let's say you're a, a customer that can't come in, a patron that can't come into the library because you're homebound. We have a, a, a program called Operation Bookshelf where we work with uh, community volunteers and we um, have books delivered to them. And we also create pop-up libraries at senior centers and at uh, school centers like Boys and Girls Clubs so that we can um, uh, give, bring the library to people in the community. When wow. you, we, we, because of um, COVID, we also have added the ability to get a library card online. So you can sign up for a library card by going to our website. And if you're a member of, uh, if you're a senior in the Salem Kaiser School District, you can actually access those online resources from your uh, student view. So when you get, so all kids have the student view which has their grades and all of that information, you'll also have access to our online resources through that. Um, so to, I could get my grades online if I was a senior in high school. You can, <laughs> yes, you can do that. Well, that's a revelation in and of itself. That's a, very interesting. So to get a library card, you just need your photo ID, uh, proof of address. We have different library cards for whether you are in the city or outside of the city. Um, uh, uh, if you don't have those things, we also have, if you don't have a permanent address, we also have a library card for that. And again, we're adding all of these resources for people that cannot get a library card so that they have access to our, 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 our resources. Right. One other barrier, I guess, parking. What's, what's going oh, on so, with parking? So our parking, thanks to our city council and our lab and our folks at the library, we have uh, now free, free three hour free parking. <laughs> so for the first three hours are free. And so if you come into the library, we, um, you can park. If you're gonna stay over three hours, you'll take a ticket from our kiosk. If you're staying under three hours, you can just go in and enjoy the library without that ticket from the kiosk. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that must have been a real uh, positive yes. event. Oh, yeah. We think that's a great service to our community members. That's great. Well, uh, I just uh, assume you're uh, also inviting everyone to come on in and yes. take a look around and yes. you know, kick the tires over there. Because yeah. I tell you, I have, and I am just enjoying it a lot. Uh, it's a really fantastic library. and all the new things happening and then I think just this sense of I'm being welcomed in to a part of the city that I can really enjoy I must must be really gratifying. Oh it is it's great to see people in using our resources uh, using the study rooms, checking out our cultural passes. We have cultural passes that get you into the Gilbert Museum, the Willamette Heritage Center, oh the gosh. Halley Museum. So all of these things are so exciting to um, bring to our community and see them getting used. Um, it's, it's just really, and just the gratitude uh, folks coming into the library. We just appreciate all the gratitude that folks Great. have given us. And then I, I guess just finally, cause I have, uh, uh, my wife has a special interest. I you have a genealogy section. Yes, we do, <laughs> and we're so we're so proud of that section because again, we're working with community members who are uh, who who we are fortunate enough to have come in and work with people on doing their own genealogy. So we work with the Willamette Valley Geneolo Genealogy Society, and they come in. They have volunteers that come in and they work with folks in the library and provide uh, help and assistance uh, looking up their, their heritage. Oh, that's all in all. It's just I think people we probably plumbed the surface, but uh, I think both of us would recommend and invite people to come over and use the library oh, uh, and get a sense of what's here because it's uh, it's a huge cultural asset in yes. Salem. Yes. It really is. And we're also out offering programming all the time that um, people that is free and open to everybody. Great. Well, again, thank you very much. Uh, hope you'll check back with uh, with us and talk to us about what's going on as time passes. Thank uh, you. It's really great. Thank, thank you, you, Kim.